All right, joining me now, Erica Sanzi, mother of three school-aged children, a former teacher, director of Parents Defending um, Parents Defending Education. Erica, great to be with you, and thank you so much for joining us. You see that ad there, right? And they're, they're painting the parents as these extremists who are trying to score political points. Um, when I see these clips of parents standing up at uh, the school board meetings, sure, it gets heated, but you understand that they're fighting for what they believe is right for their children, for their education. It really has nothing to do with politics. Do you agree, or...? I totally agree. Um, and I've been saying for probably 18 months that this, you know, parental movement is the most bipartisan phenomenon I've ever seen. This is about parents who have legitimate concerns, who are worried, who have questions. Some will be perfectly satisfied once they get their questions answered. But what has happened is that in addition to all that happened with COVID, right, with them thinking, like my schools are closed or no one's listening to me or no one's getting back to me. They run into a brick wall repeatedly and then they are also demonized and smeared simply because they have questions and concerns. It is impossible to understand how the union or anybody could think this is a winning argument. And what do you think about the timing of this particular ad, right? We're heading into the school season. We've had two rough years. You brought up COVID. That's where some of these debates started. There are some districts that are saying, if you want to come to school, the kids have to mask up again. And the conversations go on and on. Um, the conversations in Florida, for example, about what little children can learn about sexual orientation. I mean, uh, critical race theory. These are just some of the things that we've talked about the last two years. And as, as the kids are set to go back now in earnest, I only imagine that, um, you know, the emotions and the tensions will be running high. I think that they are going to be running high. And I think that's partly, again, because all of the problems that you laid out are real. These are not things that parents are inventing. They are seeing things, hearing things, looking at materials, talking to their children, talking to other parents. So the fact that a parent has concerns that they're you know, kindergarten, first, second grader is going to be required to have lessons in class about gender identity. That is an understandable concern and it should be discussed. And a person shouldn't be called, you know, a slur, like a transphobe or, or a bigot because they have concerns about those lessons. Many of us send our sons to school and in school they are told that they are oppressors because they were born male. Mm. Every parent has every right to be concerned about that. And so to your point, this isn't a political thing. This is a raw nerve that has been struck with parents who know that the well-being of their children is at risk, or at the very least, that there's reason to be concerned and, and be vigilant enough to ask questions. And I certainly think that school districts would be wise to answer those questions in a respectful manner. I think you're of, right. You know, looking to demonize parents. I think you're right. And part of the problem in this country, not just within school board meetings and public schools, is the fact that we can't have a discourse about different issues and we can't calmly discuss things, debate things. It has to get so extreme. I'll just bring up this stat because I think it's important in the last moment that we have to the point that you just made. Nearly two million fewer students have enrolled um, in public schools uh, between 2020 and 2021. I think it's starting to show that there's this, uh, you know, t um, a trend towards private schools towards charter schools. Really quick, Erica, are you seeing that? Oh, absolutely. The state of California has lost 271,000 students. Many parents decided they were going to homeschool or that they were going to find alternative options for their children, um, especially people who saw that either their schools didn't open or their children were going to have to mask, but the school down the street was open. Exactly. So again, parents' eyes there were are wide other, open for a lot of reasons. There are other options, just like there are, you know, when it comes to business and competition, people are seeking those options yep. out. Erica, great to have you on tonight. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend.